Worried about getting cancer or autoimmune diseases? I'm Dr. Liu and I'm an infectious disease doctor. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five everyday habits that make your DNA sick to increase your risk of getting cancers and autoimmune diseases. And of course, let's chat about what to do about it. Now, my patients often wonder, why me? Was there something they could have done to prevent their disease? Hindsight is always 2020, so let's learn from other people's journey so that you and your children don't have to walk that same path. Now, I know you've heard smoking is one of those very well clearly documented cancer causing habits. Hundreds and thousands of smokers gave themselves inflammatory blackened lungs and cancer so that you know not to light up a mini forest fire by burning cigarettes. Smoking marijuana is the same idea. It clearly causes cancer too. Really inhaling anything burnt, whether it's tobacco, cannabis, or a basil plant causes inflammation that destroys your health. Even inhaling burnt food and oils while you're cooking can cause cancer. So don't burn things, whether it's on the stove, grill, or joint, or candle, and smell them. As an adult, your body is miraculous. It's actually more resilient, much more so than your growing children. So please don't smoke in front of your kids, or and don't allow anybody around them to smoke. And this is why it's not okay for your child to get sunburned. Just one or two blistering sunburns doubles your child's lifetime risk of a skin cancer called melanoma. It's the same cancer that plagued President Jimmy Carter. Now, if you have any moles, use this slide to guide you, but really see a dermatologist to get properly evaluated. Don't misunderstand. The sun is very good for you. You need sun to make vitamin D, to set your circadian rhythm, to reduce depression, and to improve your sleep. But too much sunshine will mutate your skin's DNA, causing not only skin cancer, but it will dehydrate, wrinkle, and age your skin. Now, UV radiation activates your body's own defenses to then make inflammatory chemicals called superoxide and nitric oxide. This process continues in your body even after you have long left the sun. Wear a hat, long sleeves, UV protective clothing, and a mineral-based sunblock if you plan to stay in the sun for a prolonged duration. The morning time is the best time to get gentle sunlight for about 30 minutes. You know, this helps you reset your biological clock. So don't forget that your food also makes a huge difference in your skin's ability to protect you from UV damage and to heal from any UV radiation. So tank up on green tea, leafy greens, and tomatoes, which have phytonutrients such as vitamin C, polyphenols, and beta carotene to help you block the damaging UV rays. If getting burned is bad for your skin, Skin, and inhaling burnt material is bad for your health. It's also bad to eat. So that crispy chicken, duck, or pig is cancer causing, and so is that charbroiled burger and steak. When you char or burn food, you're in fact a chemist and making chemical reactions. When you eat burnt food, you are not eating the same food. High heat causes these chemical reactions, changing the protein in your food as well as the fat in your food to make heterocyclic amines, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are fancy chemicals that are linked to cancer. Now, if you bought food with these ingredients on the label, would you eat them? I hope not. Just because you don't make labels with home cooked meals doesn't mean that what you're cooking is good for you to eat. Food should help nourish your body and allow your body to heal and repair tissue. Even though you're not growing tall, you are actively growing. You're regrowing damaged tissue, you're regrowing growing immune cells, you're healing from wounds and injuries and ulcers. If you're struggling with your health, then think about how you can improve your diet by adding low calorie, nutrient rich foods and crowd out those high calorie, nutrient poor foods that are linked to cancer. Now, generally we like crispy foods. They are high in calories. I haven't heard of anybody wanting crispy cucumber, spinach, or cabbage. Excess calorie, no matter how you get it, leads to fat. And fat is actually an organ that is designed to keep you alive, to control your body temperature, and give you energy in case you're starving. The problem is you live in a temperature controlled environment and have an abundance of calories just at the reach of your fingertips. So the fat 
fat is never getting used, but it's still metabolically active and causes chronic inflammation 24 seven to destroy your metabolism and increase your risk of cancer, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, heart disease, and osteoarthritis. Now the fat in your body doesn't work equally. It's not distributed equally. The worst fat of all is the fat inside your abdominal cavity, Actually, it's the fat inside your liver, then the fat inside your abdomen, and the fat inside your muscles. So if you look down and you can't see your feet because it's blocked by your belly, you have metabolically active inflammatory fat. The good news is if you eat fresh fiber before you eat any food, any meals, any snack, you can lose that fat that's blocking the view of your feet. Now, you have to eat enough fresh fiber and you need to eat it throughout the day. As a kid, my meals were fatty too. My brother dictated what I would eat and obviously he cooked what he liked to eat, which was a lot of canned ham. Luckily for me, eating salty canned meat every day ruined any desire for me to eat canned meat because it's associated with high rates of cancer. There's something about high salt by itself that's associated with high stomach cancer, and then the preservatives in processed meats like the nitrates are also cancer causing. The goal should be not to eat preserved meats at all, but if you must eat them, eat them first with your fresh whole food fiber so that the fiber can trap in the toxins that you're eating from your processed meat. And when you trap it in, you're just gonna poop it out. Toxins, unfortunately, are abundant in our food chain. If farmers don't check the soil, the air, really the food that they grow can be heavily contaminated with things like heavy metals. Now, this is exactly the problem with dark chocolate. The cacao beans are grown in polluted fields next to industry that's also polluting the air. So when the beans are growing, it absorbs heavy metals in the dirt. And when they lay the beans out to dry, heavy metals from the air settle onto the drying beans. And when they take that bean and grind it up and process it, they are also keeping the toxic heavy metal. Obviously it's best not to eat them, but if you must eat them, eat them after you've eaten fresh whole food fiber. So you may think that dark chocolate has a lot of fiber. Yes, that's true. And this illustrates perfectly the example of whole food versus processed food fiber. Now dark chocolate is a processed food. The fiber has been ground up, everything is emulsified, so this is why it's smooth. But that fiber has lost its protective ability to block the heavy metals. Whereas if you ate fresh fiber, that's not blended or destroyed or grounded. Like let's say you eat an apple, slices of papaya, you eat a salad. You know, those leafy greens, that intact fiber structure will literally trap some of the processed foods that you eat after that. And you can't digest fiber, really only the organisms who can digest fiber are your gut microbiome. So your fiber in its intact original form serves as a matrix to block the fat and the heavy metals that you're gonna be eating with that dark chocolate. So you're basically in essence creating a fiber wall. I hope you realize that there are lots you can do to protect you and your family's DNA so that our toxins don't make you sick. If you like this video, please join me in my next one. See you there.